Hello, in this video, I'm going over the Azure Automation Hybrid Worker role, what it is, and how to set it up. Okay, in this video, I'm gonna go over what the Azure Automation Hybrid Worker is, and then I'm gonna go over setting it up on a uh, Windows uh, Server Core VM. So with that, let's just get started. Let's take a step back and look at what the Azure Automation platform really is. It's a place that allows you to run these uh, run books. Run books can be scripts, uh, either PowerShell, PowerShell Workflow, or uh, Python 2. And with those scripts, you can interact with things like uh, Office 365, you can interact with SharePoint or Azure AD. You can inter interact with Azure resources such as web apps. Uh, you can uh, interact and control Azure VMs. But what happens when you want to run a runbook against something on your internal domain? Classic example would be you want to set up a new AD account. Well, when the runbook tries to run or tries to access anything in there, you have a firewall that's going to block it, uh, unless you expose some APIs to the internet, which I doubt many people do. So with that in mind, let's go back and look at how the hybrid runbook works. Uh, what you do first is you install this hybrid worker on a machine within your dom domain or network. Really, domain's kind of misleading. Uh, it can be any secured network. It can even be uh, VMs in Azure behind a firewall or a network security group. It could be in uh, some other cloud service. You install the hybrid worker on a machine inside that secure domain. And that hybrid worker is going to go out the firewall on port 443, and it's going to connect to Azure Automation. Once that connection is made, then you can direct your runbooks to run on that hybrid worker. So when they're triggered, that runbook comes down local and it runs within that secure domain. Okay, so hybrid runbook workers are members of a hybrid runbook work group. Uh, this is, sounds way more confusing than it is. Uh, for example, this would be a, a group two for the hybrid work group, and you can have two VMs in there. And when you assign a runbook to run on that group, it's going to pick either one of these. That gives it some HA if one goes down. Uh, if you have a lot of stuff processing, it can run in that. Runbook jobs are assigned to the hybrid runbook work group, not the hybrid worker. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you have one uh, worker, one work group, it really doesn't matter. But if you grow larger environments or you have multiple work groups, um, it does become important to keep that in mind that you're, these jobs are not running on a worker itself or you're not assigning it to a worker itself, you're assigning it to a work group and then it's gonna run on any one of those workers within that work group. So to install uh, the hybrid worker, you're first going to need the Azure Automation account and you're going to need a Log Analytics workspace that's linked. You're going to see a lot of dependencies between Azure Automation Hybrid Worker and Log Analytics. It's best to have Log Analytics workspace set up and linked. If you're not familiar with Log Analytics, check out my playlist on YouTube for Log Analytics. It'll show you how to get one set up and get started with that. Uh, the server that runs the hybrid worker is going to need internet connectivity outbound uh, over SSL. And the hybrid worker needs to be connected in that log analytic workspace. If you don't have the log analytics and Azure Automation account pre-configured and linked, uh, log analytics may create uh, Azure Automation account for you. And then it's going to have that default name with a lot of crazy characters and it's going to be hard to understand. So it's just best to get these two uh, things set up and linked together before you install a hybrid worker. Uh, my previous video in the series has uh, information on how to link a, a Log Analytics and Azure Automation account. So if you don't have that in place, go back and check that out. Um, when you install them, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need a runbook workgroup name. So if you have an existing workgroup, you can use that or you can create a new. And then you're going to need the account URL and access key or token. And we'll get those here in the demonstration. Okay, so here's a quick overview of how to set this up. In my case, the server's domain join and the log analytics account is connected. The hybrid worker will run on both Windows and Linux. 
Um, this example is going over Windows. There is other documentation on how to set it up on Linux. I can link to that in the notes. So let's get started. Okay, so here I am inside my automation account and I have a server here that I'm going to uh, add to the hybrid worker role. The first thing I'm going to do is start PowerShell. And after that, I have to navigate to a directory under the Microsoft Monitoring Agent subfolder. Okay, so now that I'm in that directory, I'm going to go and import the module for hybrid registration. Uh, hybrid registration.psd1. And just to note that this module is under the Microsoft Monitoring Agent directory, so there again, you have to have this uh, VM in log analytics uh, to get that Microsoft monitoring agent installed and get access to this module. Next, we're gonna add the hybrid runbook worker. The first option we're gonna pass through is the group name. And for this, I'm just gonna pick uh, Something simple, work group one. Um, just to point out that if you had an existing work group, you could use that name here to add a second hybrid worker to an existing hybrid worker group. In this case, it's my first one, so I'm just gonna add that. Uh, the next option is the endpoint URL. And to find that, we're going to go into keys in our Azure Automation account and copy this URL. The third option is token. Token is one of these access keys. I'm just going to take the secondary one. And I'm compelled to point out that I will be rotating these keys before I post this video. So don't bother trying to copy that down. So once I have that, I can hit enter. And that's it. Now we go back to our automation account. And go up to hybrid workers. You can see here is the uh, worker group. Okay, so that's the manual process. Um, larger environments may benefit from something like desired state configuration to push this out. Uh, something else to note that any modules that your runbooks are going to need have to be installed on this hybrid worker. So for example, if your uh, runbook is going to add a user to Active Directory, you have to install the Active Directory modules on that computer. There again, using something like DSC, Chef Puppet, or SCCM to push out configurations and manage that would be beneficial in this kind of environment. So with that, I'm going to run um, uh, Runbook against that uh, new worker. So we go up to Runbooks. And I have a simple test one here. It's not even published. We'll go into edit so we can see what it's doing. So here all I'm doing is getting the environment computer name and then I'm writing that out to the output stream. So I'm gonna test this. And for the first test, I'm gonna run it on Azure or within Azure. So we hit start and we'll give it a couple seconds to run. Okay, so it's complete and the local host name is client, okay. So that's what it's called in Azure. So let's run this again, but this time we're gonna select the hybrid worker. And when we do, we get a drop-down box here to select what worker group. 
I only have one, so I'm going to select that one and hit start. And we'll give this a couple seconds to run. That's complete. So now you can see OMS Test HW1. That's the name of the machine that I installed that hybrid roll on. That's working as expected. Let's go back and edit this. And I want to demonstrate something else. So what this is doing now is it's just going to get a WMI object uh, for a computer on my domain. Uh, that hybrid worker has uh, network access. There's no firewall in between it. Um, then I'm going to output the amount of RAM and gigabytes. Just something kind of random to show how it works. So now again, we're going to select that hybrid worker and start. And we'll give this a couple seconds to run. And here it is. You can see it did run on that OMS test HW1, but I got an access denied message. So that was expected, and that sets me up for the next slide. Okay, so the reason why that failed is because the hybrid runbook worker uses the local system account by default. So that can be changed, though, by using something called a run as account. You can specify a run as account and assign that to the hybrid worker group. Now, that's an important distinction between hybrid worker and hybrid worker group. That means that if you have a group like I have here, group one, set as default, everything that's assigned is gonna run as a local system. Um, if you assign a domain user to another group, you can have all the jobs ran assigned to that group as that domain user. Now, there may be times when local system is sufficient, and there may be times that you need a domain admin account or some sort of service account, for example, setting up a AD user. This is where having multiple worker groups may come in handy so you can, you can set uh, security specific for what's needed. Unfortunately, you can't set a credential asset per runbook. It has to be at the worker group level. So run as credentials. Run as credentials are just shared credentials in Azure Automation. You're gonna add those credentials to a worker group. And then uh, when you assign a run, uh, run book to that worker group, it's gonna run using those credentials. So let's see how that works. Okay, so here we are back at my Azure Automation account. And I'm gonna go under shared resource, add credentials. And I have no credentials, so I'm gonna add some. And then uh, I'm going to give it a name. Now it's just asking for a username. So um, now I wouldn't suggest using your domain admin account for this, but in this example, I'm going to. Okay, so I have my credential asset. Now I need to go back to my hybrid worker groups. I'm gonna select the group that I created and under group settings, there's only really one option here, uh, run as. The default is system. I'm gonna to go to custom. And you can see here now I have uh, run as credentials that I can select. There's the one that I just created, I hit save. Now let's go back to that run book that I was uh, that had problems before. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to select the hybrid worker and now although I have no way of changing the credential object but uh, because the run as credentials are assigned to this root work group, that's what it's going to run under. So now if I hit start, we'll give it a couple seconds to finish. All right, so there it's complete. Now I've got the host name, the OMS test HW1, and the remote host RAM is 2. So it was able to do that uh, get WMI object query across the LAN to that remote machine. Okay, so that's it. That's how you install a hybrid worker account and change the credentials that the worker runs under. I hope you found this helpful and informative. If so, please like and subscribe. That lets me know people are watching and I can keep making these. 
Thanks for watching.